Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> How's everybody doing today? It's good to see uh, Dean and Pam back, and uh, Dale and Brenda. Missed you last week. And Kim. Welcome back. Um, you know, I don't like to brag about the expensive places I go, but let me tell you, yesterday I went to the gas station. Woo! Was it expensive? <laughs> and I don't see any sight coming, getting hope coming out of this <laughs> recently. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to First Christian Church in Boone. For those that are online watching us, we welcome you. If you're in the area, in Boone, North Carolina, up here in the Appalachian Mountains, beautiful up here. Come and visit us. I can start off by saying thank my God for Jesus Christ for each and every one of you that made it out here today and just be online sharing with us. God, whom I love and serve, it brings me great joy to share the good news about his son, Jesus Christ. There's so many wonderful things that we could talk about. But today, I was, well, this week I was trying to find that extra strength. You know our strength comes from God. So let's find strength in God. I'm going to start with a, a reading from Galatians chapter 1. Um, we're going to spend a lot, most of the sermon is from Galatians today. And it says, it's a letter from Paul, an apostle. I was not appointed by any group of men or any human authority, but by Jesus Christ himself and by God the Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. All the brothers and sisters here join me in sending this letter to the churches of Galatia. My, may God the Father and the, our Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Jesus gave his life for our sins just as God our Father planned in order to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. I like the way Paul starts that letter. You know, I used to think that out of all the characters in the Bible, my favorite, other than Jesus, was King David. Now, the reason I like King David, because quite as far from her, he had faults. I mean, he did all kinds. Yes, he was a king, he was a mighty warrior, but he had faults. I can relate to King David short of the kingship and that mighty warrior thing. But I can relate to him. He was real. He made mistakes, but yet God favored him. <clears throat> Even and with all of his defects. You know what? God favors each and every one the same way. He accepts us with our defects and our faults. Now I know I'm not perfect, and I know my wife's not perfect, but to me, she is so close it's scary. That's just in my eyes. Nowadays, I find myself relating more to Paul. Um, the more I, I learn about Paul and, and all the things that he went through, I can see myself. You know, he started off as Saul, and he uh, was out persecuting and killing anyone who followed Jesus. And, you know, I used to be that way short of the killing, but I used to persecute Christians. You, know, you come over and pray next to me. I, I'm ready. I want to watch you. Tell me about Jesus. Go ahead. Tell me about Jesus. Let's go. That's the way I used to be. But Jesus came into my heart. Just like Saul on the road to Damascus. That point when Jesus had revealed himself to him. He never seen Jesus before. But he knew. He knew that was Jesus. <coughs> And that moment was life-changing for him. Not just because he went blind. I mean, that would make you change things, your view of things. But that moment that Jesus came into his life was that pivotal moment that changed everything in his life for him. You know, I, as I said, I used to getting mad at people who would talk to me. Before I even that, let's go back even a little further. Um, you know, I hate to admit it, but I had cursed God myself during those period of my life. And that is a dangerous thing to do. I'm going to tell you. I felt bad about that 
once I became a Christian. They still do, but I know I've been forgiven. See, when you curse God, you do it because you're angry at him. For whatever reason, he didn't do what you wanted him to do. You're angry, and then you condemn him, and then you're telling him, hey, you're wrong, God, you're wrong. And then ultimately, that leads to that hate. And then you turn away from God, and everything just kind of falls apart, and you're blaming him for all of this stuff that's happening. And let me tell you something. If you find yourself in that situation, you're on a very slippery slope, folks. It says that, that it says to me that if you're acting like that, that you're on the wrong path. You're on the path to hell and to self-destruction. But there is good news. There's excellent news. It's never too late. It's never too late to come back to God. Never too late to turn to God. It says you have to your last dying breath. In my early childhood, I was deceived by a person that I thought was somebody we could look up to. Bad things happen. And then one day, my high school friend, my best friend, Alan Birdwell, um, his family were, went to church and they invited me to church. He took me to church for the very, very first time. And it was that moment there in that church, and I, I didn't want to really believe in the beginning, but something happened in that church. There was something missing inside of me that I couldn't figure out what it was. All these years, all the troubles that I went through, there was something missing. You know what that piece was? Jesus Christ. The moment Jesus Christ entered my heart, things changed. Now, would I say they were always great after that? Yeah, we have life. Life goes on. We are human. We're going to have troubles. But things change. And gradually they change for the better. Now, I had read Galatians that day. I remember specifically the, um, that's when I got my first Bible. And they, the, the preacher there was teaching about Galatians. And when he got to um, this next verse, uh, let me see, it's in uh, verse 6. It really hit me. Verse 6 is in 7, and it says, now he's saying this to the church, but I felt like he was saying to me, he says, I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God, who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way to the, that pretends to be the good news, but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by this who deliberately twists the truth concerning Christ. Wow. I thought he was talking to me the whole time. Have you ever read a scripture or heard something and it's like, he was talking right to me. When you go to see your sermon, man, I think that preacher was looking at me the whole time. That's that conviction that Jesus puts in your heart. God is funny. He will reveal things to you when you least expect it. When I became a, a preacher, and I'd read Galatians several times after that, but not really study, but when I became a preacher, I, I, I came across verses 7, excuse me, uh, 8 and 9. And I, again, that moment where I thought God was talking to me, because he will always take you back to a point in your life that you need to think about, or something needs to be changed, or he will warn you of something. On that day, that I was ordained as a minister is when this happened. I prayed and I felt this overwhelming feeling to, to read Galatians again. And when I got to verse 8 and 7 and 8, it didn't have that same effect that it did the first time. But 8 and 9 just caught my attention. Now, it didn't do this the first several times I read it. And that's what's interesting about it. If you study and read your Bible, 
you will constantly learn something new. It, it, you read that same scripture 10 times at 11 times, it'll go, oh. That's what God's trying to tell me. And this is what happened. And it says, let God curse fall upon anyone, including us or even angels from heaven, who preach a different kind of good news that the one we preach to you, I say again, what we have said before. If anyone <coughs> preaches any other good news than the ones you are welcome, let that person be cursed. Ouch! Now, that wasn't a warning to me. I don't know what was. Especially when I was starting to be in the ministry. Now, why did I bring this up? Because we are all ministers. Whether you know it or not, if you're a part of the body of Christ, you're a representative of Christ, you're his ambassador. And when you talk to others, you need to speak from the heart, the truth, not twist the and manipulate the word to benefit whatever it is, your agenda or whatever you're thinking about. It needs to stay true to the word. When we talk to others about Jesus, we need to be just like 1 Peter 5, 8. Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The devil is waiting for that moment to come into your life and, and take and keep you in that darkness. <clears throat> Have you got any things you've, unfor you've not forgiven others of? <clears throat> he can latch onto that. If there's any anger that you're holding on to, he can latch onto that. Whatever it is that you're holding back from letting God, giving everything to God, the devil will come and try to take that. And when you've got that peace and that joy and that love and happiness, guess what else he's going to do? He's going to try to take that too. Do you know why? Because the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in full. With Jesus, we, serve, we live. We're in a new day. We're in the light. We're in his loving arms. But we're in the darkness. We can't see what's good. We can't see the truth because it's dark. Have you ever been in a room with no windows? Carolyn and I were talking about this today. You can get claustrophobic. And you, get, and you shut that door, it's dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Just like when you're in the world in that darkness, you can't see the sins that you're doing. Oh, it's perfectly fine. Everybody's doing it. Hey. You know, it's cool. But no. Once you come into the light and that door is opened up and Jesus is there, he is the light. And when you find him and you see him in that light and you step into that light, suddenly everything you've been doing comes in front of you. And you say, oh, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. I repent. And of course, the next thing to do is what? Anybody say, after we, re we believe and we repent, what do we do next? I didn't hear you. What is that? Did you say that, Brenda? Confess. You confess. Confess. And then, get baptized. Right? All these things, we don't do it because we have to. Well, we're supposed to. We do it because we want to. If you, if you think about, like, I do this because I want to, not because I have to. Oh, man, i got to be baptized. I already took a bath. No, you do it because you want to. Because that's what's the right thing to do. That's what you're supposed to do. But the devil, he comes in here to kill, and he comes to steal and destroy <clears throat> and to fill you with lies that you're not worthy of this gift. He wants you to believe that you can do it without God. You don't need him. It's a lie. It's a lie that will take you straight to hell. The devil wants to break you. 
He wants to keep you. He wants you to harass you, discourage you, and he attempts to do everything in his power to keep God's children from going to him. But you can't say, oh, the devil made me do it. Oh, the devil made me do it. That's a cop out. Let's just take Eve for an example. In the garden when she had ate, eaten fruit, and she was saying, now the Lord, God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent, he deceived me, and I ate. Mm, she used the excuse, <laughs> that won't make me do it. Her excuse did not get her off the hook, by the way. And it will not help you at all, either. You can't blame everything on the devil, okay? Yes, the devil and his demons tempt us to sin, but the devil made me do it. Come on. That is used way, way too much to, to make an excuse for our own bad behaviors, our own poor choices. Oh, the devil made me do it. Except in the case of true demonic possession, you know, of course, that, that, that's different. Other than that, the devil cannot make you do anything. He can tempt you. He can put that little carrot out in front of you. Here you go. Come on. You want this? Here, how about a cookie? He will tempt you and do everything in his power to get you to fall away from God and back into the darkness where he has control. Other than that, as I said, the devil can't make you do anything. Um, of course, the devil is obviously worthy of uh, blame for much of the the evil that goes on to the, in the world. He's influencing people. Okay? Yes. But, using the devil as a scapegoat for your own sinful decisions and choices, this is so counterproductive and um, in achieving that, uh, the overcoming our sins. You can't just blame it on him. you got to take responsibility at some point in your life. I, I know of a, um, I'm not going to mention names, but a person I know, and their daughter just bashes them all the time. <laughs> Blames everything that's going wrong in her life on her parents. Ah, if my parents would have done this, I'd be here. If it weren't for them, I'd have this, I'd blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 whatever. Take responsibility for yourself. You're the one who chose to sin. I mean, you're the one who accepted to do life as it is, but you, they don't want to take responsibility. And that's the bad thing about society. People don't want to take responsibility for things anymore. Jesus is our victory. As we sang, there's victory in Jesus, and only Jesus can save us. We were so, we're so lost without him. Oh, you may sit there and go, hey, I've got pretty good for myself. I got this, I got that, I got a nice car now. So I look at this, I'll look what I got. Look at me, me, me. Death, look at you. But where did it come from? God. You may not believe in God, but he believes in you. God is the source of all of our strength. He is our salvation, and all you have to do is call to him in your moment of weakness and let his power carry you through life's difficult moments. He will reach down and pick you up and carry you. You've all heard that uh, poem about the footsteps in the sand. There's one set of footprints. I'm going to paraphrase this whole thing. He says, I thought you were with me, God. I said, no, that's where I was carrying you. We are told to trust him and not be afraid. For the Lord himself is our strength and our defense, and he has become our salvation. The strength that comes from God, that same strength that delivers people from death and be saved from danger from all eternity, it is not physical, but it's spiritual. Our strength comes from God. Only God could save us. And how did he do that? 
He had to come down to earth to be here and take this shit, form of human and then die. We need God's strength. In those times when we're just, oh, I can't do it anymore, God. You need it. Just recently, a, an incident happened, and I was really distraught and tore up. And it, I, I'd like to say I, it didn't affect me. You know, whatever, you can say whatever you want. But what this person said, even though it was wrong, it hurt. And for about 10 minutes, it stewed. And then I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, no, no, devil. You ain't going to occupy my time and take my joy and peace away. I give it to God. And I turned that over to God and I prayed. And you know what? I wasn't stressed out a minute after that. It's amazing when you actually turn it to God and let Him be that strength in our moment of weakness, how He will just lift you up and hold you and, and take that away and look at you and say, I love you, my child. I love you. I will take care of that for you. It's the same feeling that I can, ima I can imagine. It's the same feeling it's like that I have when I look at my granddaughter. And I look at her and she smiles and giggles and, and, and uh, you know, I will do what I can to take care of you. I love you. We are children of God. God loves each and every one. He even loves those that don't believe in him. He still loves them. Now, is he happy about it? No. He, he, oh, it, it breaks his heart. The bottom line is only God can save us. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this, not from yourself, is, it is a gift of God, not by words, so that no one can boast. Hey, look at me, look what I did, I'm saved. I'm a good person. Yeah. We talked about that a few weeks ago, didn't we? Yeah. Not that we do can save us. Only Jesus. When asked what we must do to be saved, Paul said to his jailers, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That's it. We all need to be saved. And the only way we can do that is if we believe. If you don't believe, you're never saved. You can baptize 20, 30 times. If you don't believe, you just got yourself wet. Means nothing. Now I'm not going out saying we shouldn't repent and be baptized. That's not what I'm saying. Because we need to do that as well. I always stand firm on that. It's very important. But in order to be saved, it starts at belief. Trust in God. Ultimately, being strong means to be strong in faith that God is always there for you. We have faith that um, God will guide us, He will protect us. He will never leave us because His Word tells us this. And some people have a hard time with this faith thing. Well, everybody has a certain amount of faith in every day. You get in a car, right? And you drive here. You have faith that that car is going to stop when you hit the brakes, or at least you hope so. You don't know how it works, you don't know all the fine details, you just know. It works. Well, Cecil might because he used to build cars. But we just go faith that this is the way it works. And it's going to work the way it should. And when it doesn't, surprise. So, I don't know why I went off on that. <laughs> For God will equip you with the strength to battle any circumstances. He will make you strong enough to handle those little things as well as the big things. You know, they say God never gives you more than you can handle. Sometimes I wish I had the same confidence that he had in me. But it ultimately, it comes out right. When we turn our hope and our faith, our love, our strength over to God, we can do this funny thing. All things are possible only through Christ Jesus who strengthens. Now, for starters, how can we be strong and courageous in the Lord? For starters, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid of anything. 
God will take care of you. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will always be with you. Always. Never leaves us, never forsakes us. And we are told, be on your guard, stand firm in faith, be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. Paul quotes David in 1 Corinthians uh, when David told his son Solomon, uh, he uses this quote, be strong and courageous and do the work. Do the work. Courage is doing work. Well, just showing up. Hey, doing what you say you're going to do. So he says, hey, you're going to come over and help me uh, um, with blah, 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 whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 let's see what I can do. And then don't even show up, don't call. Hey, let do that. Oh, I don't want to really do this, but I said I would, so guess what? Do it. Let me ask you this. How do you trust God when life is just so hard? Think about that. I mean, stuff just comes at us so fast. One minute you're all happy, happy, and all of a sudden, next minute somebody's coming at you saying stuff or doing something, and then you, what do you do? How do you trust God? You just do it. First of all, Read the scriptures. There's truth in the scriptures. The scripture is God's word. God knows we need it. You know? Study the word. This is how you build your trust. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth in the scriptures frees your mind and your expectations of having to earn anything or do anything for your salvation. It also frees you from the unrealistic worries that your mind often runs away with, um, with worrying about this. Just know if you don't run to the word to remind you of the truth in difficult times, it becomes easier and easier for you to just lead your way away from God altogether. Confess. Just be honest with yourself and God. God already knows all those little dirty secrets of yours. Be honest with Him. Don't hold it back. Allow God to remind you who He is, what He promised, and then be honest with Him. You can tell God how you feel. You can even tell him that, hey, you know, I'm having a hard time trusting and believing some of the things I'm reading. You know, show me. Teach me the truth. Open my heart and my mind to your truth. And you know what he'll do? He'll do it. He'll guide you. If you seek him with your whole heart, you earnestly seek him, you will find him. Often we think completely... Um, we think that we completely trust God. We like to say, yeah, I, I trust God. I trust God in everything. And you may say, I trust Him with my life. Whenever we go off on our little worry wagons or our temper tantrum, that anger train, you know what you're doing? You are taking all the power away from God and all the glory away from God and saying, I can do it better. How's that working out for you? Doesn't work out too long for me very well. You need to be strong, have a strong foundation in scriptures that you can stand on, especially when you're feeling uh, uncertain. Uh, you know, a solid foundation is so important. You know, if you have a, a good foundation, it's all the way down to that, that rock, right? You can, and it's so strong, you can build a skyscraper. But if you have a weak foundation, even a house on a weak foundation will crumble in on itself. It is important that we have this solid foundation in the scriptures. The Bible is God's unfailing and unchanging word. 
And you can cling on to that truth when life throws you that little curveball. It is one thing to know the truth, but it is something sometimes hard to believe it when all these horrible things keep happening to us. Well, when that starts happening, yeah, the truth isn't going to change. God's word is not going to change. It is just as powerful then as it is today as it will be in the future. But when things aren't going so well and I'm studying, well, now i got to look at myself again. got to look at yourself. Okay, what am I doing that is not in accordance to God's word? And when you figure, and he'll reveal it to you, you may not like what you hear, but he will tell you. And you have to change. It's all about change. You can ask him to help you to believe, or you can help him to ask him to help you to, to understand and how to be how to love. If you're having a hard time loving other people, bring it to God. Tell him, look, God, I'm having a hard time with this. I can't, I don't even like this person. How am I gonna love them? He will help you to humble yourself. This helps you to accept God is bigger than all your problems, all your worries, all your concerns, any circumstances that you're in. He can even help you. He's bigger than even your marriage. You know? Confession helps you to humble yourself and allow you to, to grow in trust. He hears your requests and wants to help you grow. He wants to help your faith grow. Trust in Him. And remember to spend time with God every day. If you're not spending at least a, a, something talking to Him every single day, I'm not going to put a time limit on because that's between you and Him. But if you're not spending at least five minutes of the day, you're, you're stealing. You know that? What are you stealing? You're stealing time from Him that he wants so to be with you. He wants to spend time with you. Yes, he knows everything that's happening in your life, but he wants to hear it from your point of view. And when you're having troubles, he wants to hear that too. As I said, God is far bigger than any circumstance that we may be going through. Now I know sometimes those difficult times feel like, oh my God, it's just lasting forever. Is this ever gonna end? But understand, these are only temporary. As they always say, this too shall pass. God is present among all the bad times, and he's there through the good times. There's a song I hear, it says, I, you love me through my good, and you love me through my bad. I'm not gonna sing the rest of it because, but he does. He loves us through our good times and our bad times. When we're, when we're faithful, when we fall away, he still loves us. He is always there, and he is always faithful. God wants you to go to him with all your concerns. With <clears throat> We are given to give thanks in everything, not just for everything that we have, but in everything, in every circumstance, every situation. We must spend time with him. If you're not spending time with him, you're missing some great times to spend with him. It's just so the peace and love and joy that can come over you. Do not let your circumstances... Okay. Now, I was talking to uh, this older gentleman who had been, I guess he'd been here a whole life um, the other day, and we were talking about this God uh, stuff that we're talking about today. He said to me, do not let your circumstances dictate your relationship with God. I was like, wow, that's deep. You're right. Then he went on to say something else, and <clears throat> I'll be honest, I couldn't understand it. So I had him repeat it, and I recorded it, and still didn't understand it, so I'm going to share it with you right now. He says to me, be careful before you know it. You'll get one foot wet, and you're all excited. Then someone comes around to, with a bunch of puppycock and flim flam, and, and, on, and on a blind impulse, you do something stupid. Now, if you're lucky, you will be where the rubber hits the road and put your cards on the table and you will no longer have to sweep everything under the rug and pass the buck. Look on the bright side. Hopefully you don't put your foot in it. Make for certain 
you cut the cord before every day gets all wampy compass. Now, if any of you understand any of what I just said, my hats go off to you because I, I have no idea what that means. Do any of you know what that means? We got a couple people saying yes. But I do know that the point, because what we were talking about, that sometimes you're not careful, you put your foot into all that trouble. And somebody comes along with a bunch of poppycock and blink plan, whatever that means. Sure it doesn't, is it bad? Or not good, I should say, it's not good. And if you're not careful, everything in your life will just become all messed up. Won't be caucus, I guess. That's just what I'm assuming. If you got a different interpretation after church, I'd love to hear it. But God can shape your view of any circumstance. No matter what you're doing, he can, he can change it. Spend time with him. You need to set time each day with the Lord. If you're not doing it, you need to make time. Otherwise, you're basic. We're not that. And if you, if you do this, you'll suddenly find that your, your faith and your trust will become stronger. And when those troubled times come, you'll run to him first instead of wallowing in your own misery. Move your muscles and that mind will follow. Don't just sit there. Start with reading his word, praying, meeting with others that believe talking with them, serving the church, the body of Christ, others. Go to church. And you know what the next one is, don't you? Sunday school. That helps. All these things, if you practice them, they will help you see God outside of those difficult times, as well as during those difficult times, which will establish trust and trust in your heart that he will move in your life, not only in your life, but all the situations that you go through as well, every little circumstance, he can change that, all the bad things that happen to you, guess what, one day, one day he's going to use it for his glory, God can use even the worst circumstances for good. Doesn't matter. He can take pure evil and turn it to something good. Just look at Jesus Christ on the dying on the cross. That was pure evil. That things he went through. Being beaten and tortured. Dying on that cross. That's pure evil. But out of it, God created something good. You know what that is, right? Salvation for each and every one of us. Of course, circumstances may be bad for you, but for others, maybe not so bad. You know, I always say, hey, it can always be worse. Right? It can always get worse. What happened to me? That may be kind of a selfish way of looking at it. You know, Gandhi said, I cried because I had no shoes until I met a man with no feet. Now, look at Joseph for a second. Jobus, 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 Jonas was rejected by his brothers, sold into slavery. Then he was wrongly imprisoned for something he did not do. <coughs> and he still stayed focused on God and lived obediently each and every day of his life. And then, when he had the opportunity to face all of his accusers, he could have sat there and went, you have me a man, blah, 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 blah. No, he didn't. What he did, he forgave them. Because that's what God wants them to do. He didn't turn the tables on all those that did him wrong. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. We need to trust God. His word is true, and it will carry us through anything, any battle we need to go through. 
God's timing is always perfect. In today's information world, everything comes at us so quickly, right? I mean, one minute you hear this and just turn around. You know, just like the other day, uh, breaking news, Tommy Chong died. He's being cremated. I guess he's up in smoke. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. It was wrong. It was a hoax. He was just having a nice dream. Point is, is that things come and go at us so fast. Most of us want everything to be answered quickly. They want, you know, do you remember when <laughs> the teacher told you to go, you need to go and research this, this paper that you're going to have to do. What did you do? You had to go to the library, you had to go through the encyclopedias, you had to go through all these books, and then you had to write all everything down by hand. Kids don't realize how good they have it today, do they? Oh, I just go right there. There's my report. We had to work for it. Hmm. But, you know, there is a book out there that will help you through life, kind of guides you, and, and you can, all you have to do is pick it up and read it. Right here. Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Somebody told me that one is what the Bible stands for, and it's true. That anything you need to know, right here. And be patient. You know, when we pray, God's not going to give you what you want. He's going to give you what you need. He's just like me. I want this BMW i8 Roadster. I'm showing you a picture in case somebody happens to see one and wants to buy it for me. Just kidding. Um, I guess God won't let me have it because he knows I'll probably kill myself in it. But God won't answer your prayers for reasons. And what, what did I just screw up? It's fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because everybody wants everything in it. This information time is now. I want it now. It's my money. I want it now. Type of attitude, right? I had to figure out what that was. And that's obvious. Just look around the world. But he waits for us to come around, and we should do the same thing for God. Be patient. He sat there and you look, God, you know, I've been praying and praying and praying for this to happen. It's not happening. What's going on? I always imagine God saying, you made me wait. How do you like it? He waits for us. Psalms 27, 14 says, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait on the Lord. Keep your eyes upon Jesus and not your situation or your circumstances. You need to stay, stay focused on the big picture here. I know for a fact that when my thoughts start to control my mind, get in there, they can control my mood, they can control my attitude, they can control the way I treat my wife, my kids, and my neighbors. We need to keep that attitude in check. By focusing on Jesus and the big picture and focus on God and what, what he's done and his promises. And all this little stuff that happens around us eh, don't mean nothing anymore. When I contemplate, when I contemplate, no, when I contemplate on my problems, maybe I constipate, um, they become the most important thing. They take over everything. I start to think about my problems. I, I, oh, poor me, poor me. And if I was an alcoholic, they say, oh, poor me, drink. I am guaranteed to have a bad day if I get stuck in my head. But when I turn it over to God, everybody around me appreciates it, trust me. My wife certainly does. Because then it doesn't become my motivating factor of what I'm doing in life. I'm not going to hold on to that anger towards this person or that person because I'm not going over there because you yeah, blah, 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 or I'm not doing this because blah, blah, blah. No. Suddenly, we let that go to God and His love and His peace fills you through the Holy Spirit. And then, everything works out for some miraculous way. It just works. Put your trust in God. Let him guide you, pick you up, and, and bring you into the light. Hebrews says, let us run 
with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endures the, um, deserved, bleh, endured the cross, despite the, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's face it, life's hard. Life's hard. It's a lot easier with God than with Jesus in there. Makes you, you know, sometimes life is so hard and people do some stupid things. Just makes you think, hey, I don't think their biscuits cooked all the way in the middle. Just a fact. But we still got to love them. Paul, there are, we, the reason life's so hard is because we were in a fallen world with a bunch of fallen people. And it makes life difficult. But if you turn those things over to God, I mean really, really turn them over to God, you will find it much easier to deal with the other things that happen, on circumstances and people that come into your life. And you'll be able to work right through it. Just trust and God. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord our God will be with you. And wherever you go, the Lord himself is your strength, our defense, and he has become our salvation. So be strong, be on your guard, stand firm in faith, be courageous and be strong, and love, do everything with love. And may God the Father and the and our Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace on all the glory to God forever and ever. The church says, Amen.